Welcome. Today we're going to talk about applying a nasal CPAP to a patient. First off, you will want to correctly size the patient for the CPAP mask. For that, you should have some type of device that gives you the nasal mask sizing. You'll warn the patient ahead of time, I'm going to be uh, measuring your nose, apply the, the sizing device onto the patient's face, and assess which is the best fit. Make sure that it's not covering their eyes or going too far down their, their mouth. That uh, would cause leaks and discomfort. So in this patient, a uh, small or possibly even a medium small mask will work best. Then you're going to find the correct mask and place it on the patient's face. Sir, I'm going to be placing a mask on your face just so that we can make sure it fits. Again, assess, make sure that it's correct. Then from the, this point, you want to make sure that you assess the uh, size of spacer that you need because the spacer helps prevent the mask as you tighten it up from bending and pulling, causing leaks. So we want to place a spacer, and in this case, we want a number six spacer. So we place the uh, spacer directly on to the mask, and it will sit on the patient's forehead. Show you the wheel, mask fit wheel. As you fit the mask on, you try and identify the proper size that doesn't overlap the eyes or go too far on the, uh, the mouth. So in this case, a small mask or a medium small would work best. And as we place the mask on the patient's face, we make sure that we don't overlap onto the eyes or go too far under the nose and go over into the mouth. The uh, sizing, this little sizing block helps tell us how far this block should be and you try and make sure that the mask is level and then you find which level of the block fits the best and in this case it's the level six. That refers to the spacer, and we insert the spacer here to the sixth level, and that holds this nice onto the forehead when we put the head strap on so that the mask doesn't lift up from the bottom, or without the block, it would lift up on the bottom, or if the block's too big, it would push away from the top of the head, causing gaps that way. Next, you will attach the, uh, the bonnet to the mask. Make sure you identify the top and bottom of the mask. And it's best to connect one portion of it, one side, so that it makes it easier to go onto the patient without uh, slipping and falling. As I'm doing here, I'm placing just the straps to one size. These straps, these uh, bonnets, are all different, so you may have to uh, read instructions to make sure you know the specific fit. Place the mask on the patient's face. Bring one side around. And these are Velcro. Adjust the mask and bring the bottom strap around. And you want to uh, gently, at this point, place it on the patient's face, holding it in place. Reassess the bonnet. Adjust the straps so that you have an even positioning on the patient's face. And make sure that it is not falling over the patient's bottom lip and that it's not gapping over the patient's eyes. Make sure all the straps are straight. 
tighten it slightly. Don't over tighten it because that will be a source of discomfort. Just enough to eliminate any gaps. At this point then you will be ready to connect the, uh, the tubing from the BiPAP or CPAP system to the inlet of the mask. As we fit the bonnet and the mask we want to make sure that the mask is straight on the patient, not too low on the mouth and not over the eyes. Readjust for a nice firm fit, making sure that the, the block, the spacer, keeps the mask straight within the patient's face and doesn't cause gapping one direction or the other. Readjust slightly without over tightening and causing pressure irritation on the face.